You might see Cole not proxy, that's fine, dude. I'll still beat his ass. <laughs> hey guys, Minish Cap One here. I had a bit of a great game versus Dyrus, who was playing a Lowey. And I felt like it'd be really fun to share it on the channel. Uh, I went 11, 1, and 5 and did the most damage on my team, made Dyrus Rage pretty hard, and I think it was pretty fun. So I want to share it, and I hope you guys enjoy. At the start of the game here, I'm looking to find a proxy because versus Alawi, she's a champion who you don't want to let push up on you. If you let Alawi push up on you, then she can just set up her passive tentacles over here and then continuously harass you under the tower as if she was a ranged champion, even though she's actually a melee champion, just because of the way that her tentacle spawns work. So as I'm standing right here, waiting for the proxy, I notice that in Fog of War, I can see this tentacle, which means that Alawi's setting up over here. So I'm assuming that I can go for the proxy, which I'm going to hear in a second. My runes this game, I'm running just trying out something something different from the spell vamp uh, because I want to proxy heavily this game. I'm running movement speed coins, I'm running armor yellows, m pen reds, and AP blues because the movement speed really helps maneuver while you're proxying and it helps avoid uh, enemy jungler and it helps like, uh, excuse me, and it helps whenever you run into a team fight also. So I found that running movement speed quints in some games situationally is good and I think that spell vamp quints are also quite good. I think both of them are good right now. And I think a lot of it's probably up to preference, but it's not like spell vamp quints are bad or movement speed quints are bad. I think they're both pretty good right now. Um, I haven't tested a lot of AP quints because I'm really liking choosing between spell vamp or movement speed based on the game. And I think if you're going to be proxying primarily, then I think movement speed is probably the way to go because it helps you get around the jungle really quickly. And I think if you're going to be laning primarily, then I think spell vamp might be a bit better because spell vamp allows you to sustain while you're taking trades and stuff like that. Yeah, spell vamp helps a lot whenever you're proxying and you need to heal, but after a few levels, that really doesn't matter. Uh, in this game, I messed up and I took a tower shot while I'm going for the proxy, so it kind of ruined my proxy, but at, where spell vamp would have probably saved me. But over the long run in this game, because I was proxying so much, there, there's tower shot right there. Over the long run, the movement speed quints actually ended up helping quite a bit because I focused on staying behind the tower since it allow me uh, is a champion who really can't, you really can't all in her unless she positions poorly. Now, as far as the matchup itself is concerned, Singed has always been quite good versus Alawi. Historically, Singed has always beaten Alawi. He's never really had a big problem with her because Singed as a character, you you don't really need to stop moving to be able to fight Alawi. You can always be moving around. And okay, so right here, I want to actually and rewind that a bit. Okay, so as I'm teleporting in, I know that Nidalee was clearing topside because whenever I TP'd in, then Nidalee was, Nidalee was doing her blue whenever, uh, she was finishing her blue when I TP'd in. So that means whenever I see Alawi running up like that, trying to trade with me, that Nidalee's gonna try and fight me, or at least go for the gank. Right here, I could have all in Nidalee. I get a lot of, I get a lot of damage on her right here. Look, she's below half health. As soon as she jumped on me here, what I should have done is just ghosted and tried to chase her down and kill her, maybe like blow her flash or something, but I didn't realize that she was going to jump on me and take all that damage, so I didn't. But if I was paying more attention, I would have been able to chase her down and kill her. But yeah, I knew that Nidalee was clearing topside of her jungle, so I knew that teleporting in there had to be very careful. Um, let's rewind that just a bit. Okay. Right here, I need to be careful because the way that it's frozen is very beneficial for Illaoi. Um, right here, Singe can't, I can't walk up to those minions without taking a heavy trade, so I have to basically just wait for my melee minions before I want to go up. I can go up if I can dodge her tentacle like that, I just did there, but that requires a good amount of prediction and it's very risky. After the fling, I end up auto attacking her quite a bit and getting her really low, which sets up a tower dive because she took a lot of damage. After she got flung, I autoed her three times in addition to my poison. Pop the ghost as I'm diving, spread poison, just fling, auto attack, and get out of there.
So after that, um, as I'm clearing the minion wave, I'm pulling it towards the tentacles that I'm trying to kill, and that way I kill three of her tentacles, so she has, she, whenever she recalls, or sorry, teleports back into lane, she's going to have to spend a charge of her passive to put her tentacle down. So where she would have had three tentacles, she now only has one, and it makes her last hitting a bit harder as a result. My first back, I buy a Corrupting Potion, Doran's Ring, and Boots, because... The Doran's Ring helps with mana sustain whenever you're proxying a lot. Ooh. Okay, so right there I saw Nidalee doing my Krugs, and I put the, the W on her, and I flung her out. Did a lot of damage to her, and she ends up popping her Flash, because Nidalee does not have Boots, and I have Boots and MS Quinn, so she knows if he doesn't Flash, I'm going to end up killing her. But yeah, the Doran's Ring helps with a lot with mana whenever you are... Proxing because it just every time you kill a minion you get mana back. I want to highlight this trade. This trade is very important Versus the ally matchup So as soon as I fling her my first instinct is to put the W down because that W blocks her her um, What her W harsh lesson the one where she, she kind of like jumps to you while she's doing her uh, Slam thing which makes the tentacles hit you so, not only are you blocking a small gap closer, but you're also blocking her t a second proc of her tentacles, and you're blocking a bit of healing if those were to hit you. So, putting W down and stopping her from jumping is really, really good there. So, right there, this is actually very important, too. Okay. So, Elali wants to recall here, right? Elali is under the impression that if she recalls right now, this wave will be frozen here, because it's a cannon wave, and she'll have an easy time getting back because the only thing that's going to die is the cannon if I push it. But what I do instead is I pop out of the bush and I grab these minions ever so slightly towards me and then I let them go back after I de-aggro them in the bush. And watch what happens here to, the, to this melee minion, my melee minion. The enemy, enemy two melee minions right here are focusing that for a second and then this one ends up focusing it too, this one over here. So this melee minion is dying faster than her melee minion, so the wave is going to push towards me. It's going to push towards me. Now, Dyrus recognizes this, and instantly he's like, oh, well, I have to, you know, stay in lane now, because if I if I leave lane, then Sandra's going to freeze the lane on me, and that was the plan. If she left lane, or if he left lane, I was going to freeze it on him. But since he knows that if he was to leave lane there, he would have been screwed in the long run, he ends up staying, and I end up getting a few really good trades on him. Like right here. Uh, I put I didn't put the W down fast enough. If I put the W down faster, I would have ended up getting the kill on him there, but I didn't have it, unfortunately. I was going for the tower dive here, but as soon as he hits six, it's just not worth it because if Alawi gets his ult gets her ultimate off, then she ends up healing a lot because it's a bunch of tentacles and odds are one's gonna hit you. Uh, so it's just absolutely not worth it to go for the tower dive. There's with that low of HP after she turns six, so I end up proxying one wave. Put my trinket down, and I walk up here and recall, getting vision of the Nidalee jungle. My next recall, I buy a red war or a pink ward and uh, amp town. I'm buying AP early on because I'm rushing Rylize, and I found that the AP components of Rylize in most situations tend to outweigh the Ruby Crystal because you get a lot of damage. Oh, I forgot Masteries. I'm running Deathfire Touch this game. The reason I'm running Deathfire Touch is because I wanted to, again, try it out. Um, enemy team does not have a lot of crowd control. They have, like, they have Zaya Root, they have uh, really in Soul Stun, and they have Rakan, like, Knock Up, and all of those are skill shots. So I can pretty easily avoid it if I'm paying a lot of attention, which ends up happening this game. I want to highlight this right here. Okay. So I know that my team is chasing a Nidalee over here. I see her. I use the blasting cone to jump over the wall, ground her so she can't run, fling her into my team, get the kill on her with poison, and after I get the free kill, after <laughs> I took a proxied wave, get a kill, then I go back and I continue proxying, but not before killing this tentacle right here, getting five free gold, allow me the gold generation champion. After that. Drop another ward in her jungle and recall. Important to always have vision of Nidalee. Buy a Blasting Wand on that next recall because Blasting Wand is something that is going to give AP and build into Rylize. Two very important things. AP is helping me out tremendously here in the early game because it's giving me very efficient trades. Right here, this is something I talk about in other videos. I on the way back to lane, I want to kill Krug Camp, but she's but she's pushing. So what I decide to do is just take the big Krug and that's it. 
by only taking the big Krug, I minimize the amount of creeps I lose while getting 70 gold off of this Krug, and then 20 additional gold from the little one. Or 30, because this little one gives 10, and the two little ones, little ones give 10 more. So 70, 80, 90, 100 gold without losing any minions over here. Pretty crazy if you think about it. Because after you leave this, even though you didn't finish the camp, the whole thing just despawns so your jungler doesn't get too screwed over. It takes a long time for junglers to clear that camp anyway, so it's not the biggest deal in the world if you take it as a top laner. In fact, I think it's kind of encouraged to take it as a top laner. I accidentally fast-forwarded really, really quickly. Hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so right here, I know that Illaoi is saving teleport, so I go for a proxy. At the same time, I'm looking for Illaoi back here. I dodge her E, so I know that with double buff, I can slow her, and I don't really have to worry about mana cost. I just harass her back to her tower. Get the fuck back there, you pleb. This is my lane, not yours. And then just end up proxying the wave, because she can't, she cannot get past me unless she walks all the way around. And if she walks all the way around and I catch her here, it would be a disaster, because that would be a free kill. So what ends up happening is Dyrus recalls, and he... Just teleports to lane because he cannot physically get to the tower. At this point, I'm watching bottom, and I'm seeing the fight over here go down. I'm looking for a teleport, and I find it right here whenever the enemy overextends really hard for karma. And I complete the teleport, fling the Aurelian Soul into my tower after popping my ultimate. Run along with Zaya and Rakan, just poisoning them, poisoning them, poisoning them, spreading my cancer as much as I can. Zaya ends up dying. I spread poison onto Rakan and Aurelian Soul, fling Rakan into my team. I get the kill, and then Vladimir ends up finishing Aurelian Soul. Really clean fight overall. And I only lose one creep wave because I was proxying back here. Next item, I end up finishing Rylize and I get a Cloth Armor. The Cloth Armor is for Ninja, Ninja Tabby because they have, um, what's her face? Illaoi, who I am playing against, and they have Zaya, who is the only member of their team who is doing very well. She's 3-2, and two, so for that reason, I think that getting Ninja Tabby this game, just to reduce the chance that Zaya dumpsters me, is really important. Um, they also don't have much CC, like I discussed before. So Merc Treads would not be the most helpful thing. Like, they have some magic damage. My team is just getting kills in mid. Good for them. They have some magic damage, but they don't have a lot of crowd control. I can just itemize HP later on for the for the magic damage and rely on my ultimate for MR. Since Alawi has no teleport, there's no problem at all with me keeping her pushed in. Push her in, and then whenever my ult's going to come up relatively soon, I walk behind the tower and begin proxying again. So right here, I notice that Nidalee is trying to kill wolves. I fling the wolf away, put, my, put myself in between the wolf and her, and then as soon as she jumps to kill the wolf, I pop ultimate, and I just chase her down and kill her. Because she greeted for the wolf. And then, yeah, my poison dot ends up killing her right there. Well, the better choice for her would have been to just let me have the wolf camp and take the, take the death. But because I was able to walk with her, I ended up getting the kill. After get the after getting the kill on Nidalee, it's important to take the um, take the blue buff because it means that you're denying her jungle even more after her death, including the camp that I already took. Doing the same thing here that I did before, taking the Krug camp before walking over to lane to take minions. I bought a Blasting Wand because I want to build into a Leandries, but I'm not needing the Haunting Guy's Magic Pen this early because they don't have that much magic resistance on their team yet. Uh, Aurelian Soul has Abyssal Mask, which I've seen being played as a new Aurelian Soul build, but it's not that important because the other teammates of his don't have that much MR at all. I see a fight going down in mid lane, I'm rotating down to it. I put a W on Zaya, so Zaya ends up dying. And then I try to get as, as many catches as I can, but it only ends up being her. And then we push mid after she dies. I want to highlight how I made that decision to roam. One more time. Okay, so after I push this wave, I am looking bottom, and I'm seeing that there's some shit going down bottom. And then, uh, because of that, I'm just running down a... Uh, Wrong vision, sorry. I'm just running down the whole time. 
Put the W on Zaya. She ends up dying. And we finish up by pushing the tower. But yeah, whenever my enemy, whenever the enemy top laner, you're able to push them in like that, it's fine to be able to roam because you put a lot of pressure on them to leave lane also and try and match your match your roam. And if they don't match your roam and you're far ahead, then you can just go ahead and get kills for your team. She's also not strong enough to push my tower very quickly, so it ends up being a big a big plus for me there. I don't have to worry about her taking the tower too much. Vladimir also ends up teleporting top to hold the tower. So here, Twitch ended up walking away from the tower instead of just killing it. J4 comes back over and ends up killing the tower. I fling a Lowy into my team, which almost ends up being a disaster, but the tentacles miss and we just walk away. I find a pink ward there while I'm recalling and I kill it. I have a suspicion that they're going to go over to Dragon because Nidalee killed the first Dragon very, very quickly on spawn. So I, after I push this first wave, or this next wave, I rotate over towards the Dragon. Or now, okay, yeah, I rotate over towards the Dragon. I see that I'm on another pink ward, and so I kill it. I, they, they, they just got the Dragon, so there's not really any point in me going over there since I don't have ultimate either and it's very foolish as Singe to fight with that ultimate so I just killed that pink ward. Notice that my team is doing some stuff. J4 kills that pink ward so I get a bunch of EXP from killing pink wards and 60 gold from killing them too. Kind of helps buffer the fact that I left lane for that long and lost some minions on the tower. Right here I see a Lowey farming and I'm going to rewind that just a little bit actually. Okay right, oh whoops. Okay, right here, I see Alawi overextended to farm. I'm not sure what her summoners are, but I know that even if she flashes away right here, I could probably still catch her with my ultimate and ghost. I TP in, put the W down so she can't ult. Every time she takes damage, her spirit, her spirit duration is reduced. Fling her into my tower, dodge the Q, and then dodge the E right there. Dab on the haters, and I get the kill, and I walk away. I just said dab on the haters, by the way. I gave myself cancer. I'm a degenerate. <laughs> Goofling the scuttle crab into the corner, so it's trapped. Killed the scuttle crab, some free gold, a little bit of health back. My next item, I am getting a giant belt because I want to build into a dead man's plate. Dead Man's Plate being a very good item overall on Singed. I talked about this in the video with Chimso that I did coaching with him on, and I talked about it in this other video that I'm going to be uploading where I coached another player. Um, Dead Man's Plate, very good on Singed. I'm trying to just zone them off of my team right now, but they end up walking into my poison for some reason, so I just pop ultimate, and I run up to Nidalee, and I fling her. She ends up dying to poison. I'm very strong right now with Rylai's Leandries and DFT taking. Uh, she dies to poison. Rakan dies to poison here. I walk up into the corner versus a Lowey, kill her too. At this point, Dyrus is very sad. He's a very sad man on stream, uh, unfortunately for him. Wings of Death over here asked me if Dyrus or if Singed counters Alawi, and I said yes. Singed has always countered Alawi. He's always been very good with very good against her, which is true, because like I was saying before, Singed can just move around and avoid her tentacles without needing to stop and auto attack her. Like he can. But he can do damage to her while moving the entire time, which makes it very hard for her tentacles to land up reliably. So right here, just body locking for my team while we take the inhibitor. Putting the W down and walking away. Trying to slow for my team. Vladimir ends up walking up. I predicted dodge the Rakan W, or whatever that ability is, I don't even know. Um, Nilia walks up, I fling her into my team, she flashes out, free flash. Kill another ward right there. Then I recall. Finish up the dead man's plate right there and I'm running back to the lane with it. Pull the Krog on the way there. Okay, so right here, we have Vision of Aurelian Soul, but they don't know that. So I am actually pinging... Okay, so we have Vision of Ruling Soul. We don't know that Rakan's there. Um, I'm pinging, I'm typing to Twitch in chat to bait, bait, bait. And then as soon as Alawi overextends, I'm running over there with my ultimate and ghost. Put the W on her. Fling her away from Twitch before she can kill Twitch. Bop her with my dead man's plate, get the kill. 
I run back down towards the lane to try and catch Rakan over here. Vladimir ends up doing a lot of damage to him, but I see Zaya, and then I run with her instead, fling her, and then poison her, auto attack her. She ends up living with 12 HP. She lived with 12 HP if I had just stood with her like for half a second, even like a one tenth of a second longer, then she would have taken an extra tick of poison and died. But I didn't want to get caught by the Aurelian Soul Ultimate, which I knew he's gonna, which I knew he was going to charge. And since I don't have any MR on this build right now, if I got hit by the Ultimate and then stuck under tower with his stun, and then he follow up stunned with his Q, there's a chance that I would have died because I have, I have a good amount of health, but I'm not, Im I'm not immune to death, even though I'm ten one and three. So right here, I noticed that they're wanting my team is wanting to go for Baron, and they are, so I'm just body blocking the enemy team. This is, this is something that Singed is very good at. Let me show you. They They're gonna they have a very hard time. They're gonna have a very hard time walking past my poison. Look at this. The enemy team, they just they're so scared to walk my poison because they know they're gonna take a lot of damage if they do. I fling Rakan away from my team because Rakan is their primary initiation. They're just walking through poison over here, getting damage, getting damage, getting damage, getting damage the whole entire time. They can't really do much because I'm so far ahead with Rallies and Leandries. After that, I fling Alawi and my team finishes her off because Alawi is the most immediate threat in the area. The other teammates, over, other enemy team team members over here are really scared to fight, and so they just they just don't. I recall with the Baron buff, and after I recall with the Baron buff, I channel teleport and I go mid to flank, and I chase down Zaya with ultimate, and I bop her with uh, with my fling for the kill, and then they immediately surrendered. So. Very fun game overall. I went 11, 1, and 5. Uh, I think it was a pretty great game. Again, Elawi is, uh, she's a brain dead easy matchup for Singed. If you know what you're doing, there's not much an Elawi can do versus you because you're able to move so much uh, during trades that since, her, she, since she's not really good at auto attacking, she has to rely on her abilities to trade. It ends up being really good for you since as Singed, you're a character who can move around and dodge her skill shots. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one. Bye.